All right, with this is going to be a quick little overview video. This is going to be covering custom brushes. How do we get some nice, wonderful little lines here? Uh, they're kind of tapers, so we're going to be building a custom brush. You're going to be focusing on gradients, uh, and then we're just going to be double checking that our organization within our layers uh, is good to go. So uh, at this point, most of you have already completed your drawing. So let's just get it into a nice, wonderful format. I'm going to go File, New. 800 by 800 is you uh, went off of a web document. This will also automatically bring it to a pixel type of format. If it says inches, you can drop down and pick pixels since this is going to be web based or app based in like the app store. Uh, we can change that to RGB as well. Uh, I did pop this up to 150, you could move it up to 300, but for the most part, uh, the default ones will work out just fine. So hit on OK. I'm going to move this over so you guys can see it. Okay, so now the first step is to get our image into our format. I am going to go down to File, Place. Make sure you're not doing File Open, File Place. I'm going to go Dropbox, and I believe mine is in Camera Uploads. And I'm holding down Shift just to keep my original image nice and wonderfully formatted so it doesn't stretch it out and look all funky. For the most part, that's pretty good. I will be kind of moving some of my images around to just fit within that artboard. But for this demo, when we do our inking, I'm just going to be focusing on the head. So that'll actually work out just fine. Uh, in our layers window, I'm going to have the little menu open. I'm going to drop down to template. It's going to give us a 50% opacity. And then I'm going to create a new layer. Let's double click that and let's say inking layer. So this is going to be our black lines layer. Okay, now for those that are, are watching, I am not using a, I'm just using my mouse, and I'm going to kind of give you a simplified approach for the pen tool. I think it's just a little easier for you guys to just be learning with. So we are going to be focusing a lot more on just small segments, small segments. So I'm going to click, I'm going to point in the direction I want, I'm going to come back around, and I'm going to click and drag. Let's just switch those around. Now why I like teaching just small segments first is it is uh, kind of removes a lot of the painful part of the pen tool. I'm going to click P. Now things just to be aware of as you are clicking is we are going to be doing a taper and that taper how it is defined is where you start and where you end your line. So just be aware that where you start the line will affect that taper and I'll just show you right now. V black arrow. So let's say if I want my new brush, since I started that line here, click, click, it's going to taper in the direction that that line went in. So just kind of be aware. So if, since this is a fat line, I'll just use this top part of the head. Go back to the pen tool, click, and drag. Another little thing you might notice is I almost use my mouse and I trace, and that seems to help a little bit too. So just a little tidbit there. Okay, black arrow, V. And since these are all going to be butting up, notice that this is butting up with this one. This one's going to be overlapping. This one's going to be overlapping. So this edge isn't really going to be matter. We're just going to be erasing it. Okay, those look good. I might bring this up to 1.5. 1.5. Beautiful. All right, and just so you can see the entire process, so some of you guys have seen some of the syncing before, um, just so you can see kind of the start to finish in case you want to skip over some of this. I'm just going to go Object, Expand. Now my stroke is basically completely gone. It's just a big giant shape at this point in time, so you're going to notice that we lost that stroke line. So if I am using my direct selection tool, I'm just my selection tool, I can click on the shape. I'm going to go Shift E, and Shift E is just our eraser tool. I can adjust the size of the eraser with the 
brackets. For those that don't know where the brackets are, bracket is next to your P key. So O, P, and then it'll start having your brackets. V, actually I want this one to delete. Just notice where it's overlapping, and then I can just delete it. So just notice that if I have this one selected, that it is not deleting the other lines. So it's only going to delete the lines that you have selected, which is really, really nice. Okay, so I'm just going to continue the sum of the face. P, click, point in the direction you want. Click, drag until it's rounded. This one, I am going to finish this, so I'm going to hold Alt Option so it can come back on itself. Let's just switch those up. Go back to our white arrow. Okay, perfect. P. Click in the direction I want. I'm going to change this one a little bit. Alt. Perfect. So things just overall, little things to just be noticing. Notice that I am small segments. Also just kind of be aware that uh, I like to adjust as we are done, which is just your white arrow, so your direct selection tool. Once you kind of click some stuff, just come back through, modify. Why I like small segments is it kind of takes the pressure off. So you don't have to get super perfect lines all over the place. I think that's a lot easier to kind of grasp as a new student or a new learner of photo or uh, Illustrator here. Click, click, and click. These I'm going to go, let's just switch these around. Go back to P, click, point in the direction I want. Black arrow, bump that back up. White arrow. This dual line tool. And then I might stop this part here. I'm going to hold down shift. I want this nice and straight going across. Click P. Uh, other little tidbit about the uh, why I'm clicking P is it will reset the pen tool, which I think is very helpful. Now, if you don't want to use the pen tool for everything, keep in mind you can be using your shapes to draw. So if I say, hey, that looks pretty similar to a nice, wonderful little circle, that would be an option as well. I'm just going to come over, and I do like the little scissor clipping. Some people don't like it as much, but teach their own. And all that does is it breaks down the segments. So that was just the scissor tool. And you can kind of see that it'll highlight path, path, path. And you just have to click, and it'll actually cut that shape for you. So that's actually kind of nice. Okay, so I'm just going to continue around. Um, but for the most part, that is how you are going to be doing your pen tool. Click, do real short strokes, click, drag. Come back over, black arrow. Find the brush that you want. Adjust the size looks good. If you are then done, I'm going to select the ones that I want. Let's just select all of them. Object expand so you guys can see the entire process. I'm going to do it again. Notice that these lines are still strokes, so it didn't do all of them. Sometimes it's finicky. Okay. Black arrow, shift E. Just delete the ones you want. I'm going to kind of speed through this just so once you guys kind of understand the process. 
that you guys can go really, really fast with it. We can put here. And notice that it's selected. It's not deleting my other lines. Let's do this one. Shifty. Black arrow. Shifty. I will clean up that edge at some point. So some of these little cleanups we can always do later, but uh, for the most part, I want to end that part right here, and then we'll start to move into our coloring. So f I'm going to just uh, speed ahead and uh, finish up the inking, and then you guys will we'll show you guys how to do the coloring with the gradient tool. All right, at this point, I am all done inking. Uh, you're going to notice that some of the different sizes that I've used so they're not all the same. So whenever, kind of just a good rule of thumb when you're inking, uh, vary the size, so elements and principles, and just variation on uh, your line quality will give you a, quite a bit of, uh, just some varying interest as you go around the piece. So that's actually kind of what you're looking for. Uh, other little tidbits is not every, and you'll kind of see that they're all still for the most part separated. So some of them are actually still strokes, so if I thought that they were lined up and I didn't expand them yet, no problem. Uh, there is a whole option with the live paint bucket. Let's just show you real quick. So if you like live paint bucket, and this is just moving into coloring. So what I'm going to do here is, let's just duplicate this layer. I'm going to lock that bad boy so you guys, so we're just going to be working here. So first... Since I still have some strokes, I'm going to expand appearance. I still see some. I'm going to do it again. Hit OK. So I'm just double checking that all that wonderful stuff. I don't think I see any strokes. Good, good, good. Go into your Pathfinder. Just click Unite. And that's just going to start merging them all together. Beautiful. Okay, so it sort of looks like that. That's kind of what we're looking for layer and this is probably the fastest way to color your your project object live paint click make and this is what it's going to do I can do this live paint bucket option so I've been painting things purple but I can come through click 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 I want things purple I want things pink I want something tan you can kind of see that that is a fairly quick option for you. Now the major thing is as long as everything is kind of enclosed, you're going to notice that it just sees things as enclosed shapes. And you'll be able to color it. So that is one option. Object expand. And then there you go. So that would be one nice little option for you. Now with this option, let's just drop that back point, that just down. Uh, and now we can start to do kind of the other option. Let's just do show you the other one. Now why I'm showing you another one, I'll just leave this one here for just kind of like a base layer. Let's just hide it for the demonstration here. Now why I would do different things is I am going to be using the gradient tool and I think it's a little bit nicer as if they have kind of shapes to follow around. Okay, so for just speed of painting, this would be actually a nice option. That light live paint bucket I think is a very, very nice option for everybody. Okay, so right now all I'm doing is just kind of building shapes. And you're going to notice that I am overlapping them. And what I'm thinking of is how this is going to be playing an effect. I'm not too concerned right now about different ones. I will worry about, let's just arrange, 
move to fronts. I'm going to do one other nice one for the back side here. And you could do, you could be really specific with it. Since most of my guys are, or most of this character is just circles. And this will be the one that goes all the way down to the bottom. So I'm just using my nice, wonderful little direct selection tool. And I'm just modifying. I want to make sure that that one is all the way in the back. I'll just add two points on that line. Back to direct selection tool. Just so I can get this little puff. Okay, real quick, let's do the tail. And I'm just going to do another little option for you. So this one, I have a purple fill. No stroke. And I'm just using my pen tool to just kind of walk around the tail. We're just covering all of our bases today. Man. So option one for coloring would be you have your expand all your lines. You want to unite them using Pathfinder. And then all you are doing is coming up to the top, object, live paint, you are going to make, and then you can use the live paint bucket. So that is option number one. Option number two is I was just using my shapes. That would be a nice little simple option for you. So let's just click this. I'm going to come into my nice, wonderful eraser tool. And we'll get right into the gradient at this point. So you can really pick and choose. Um, the one I'm doing right now is probably the one I do the least. I really like just doing the kind of the pen tool and the shapes and just kind of matching as best as I can. I think that's usually pretty efficient. Okay. Let's just make sure. Let's bring that to front. So I want all of these, for the most part, in order of where I think they are in space. So I want this one all the way behind. I want this one in front. I want the head in front of the back as well as the bum. And then I want the tail in front of the bum. Okay. So these are all ready to go. These are all on a color layer. So notice they are not on our inking layer. And now we can start moving into our gradient. So let's just select our head. Okay. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up to the top, edit, copy, edit, paste, and front. And so now I'm going to have two shapes. So I have shape here, shape here. I'm going to come over to gradient. I want a radial gradient. I'm going to double click on this one, and I want this one to be the same color as my body shape. I'm just going to click anywhere, deselect it. Double click. And this one really could be whatever color you want. I just want a light pink for that one. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to drop this down maybe to around 50. So it's a little bit more subtle. And at that point, looks pretty good. Now the only thing I don't like is the placement of it. So there's this nice, wonderful little gradient tool over in our tool menu. And we're going to be able to take our gradient and move it to where we'd like. I can also control how far out I want. I can also control the direction of it. So especially with a linear gradient, that's going to be really important. So once I have it, I can also adjust how much of each one is kind of peeking through. Okay, that looks pretty good. Click V. Now, this is how fun and how rapid fire this is. I have this one. Command C. Command C again is just there's your copy. Command F is your object or your edit. Paste in front. I just have to click on it. It's automatically doing it. Come back to my gradient tool. 
And I want that right on the back here. Now why we created all those other shapes is notice that I just, I want this one just kind of following along right here. I don't want this flying all the way up. I want a separate gradient for that one. Okay, that one looks good. V, Command C, Command F. Once you learn the show cards, this is super, super fast. All right, click. Now this is what I'm really looking kind of to avoid. Now this little edge would actually get covered up by the hand color, so that's not going to be as huge of an ordeal. But I can also move that back up. I want this right by the back side. And so I just want it to kind of hang out there. So what you're avoiding is kind of harsh edges. So even this color right here, this little harsh edge, that's going to get covered up by the, uh, the hand color. Okay, boom. Command C, Command F. Rapid fire. Click, click, click. Okay, looks good. So I'm just going to do the same for the face, do the same for the tongue, hand, and then we're going to do our cast shadows, and then we'll do the background, and then we'll be done. But for the most part, just let's just cover it up, have separate areas. Notice we have separate shapes for each one of those. Okay, let's move on to the kind of final steps of our uh, coloring process. So the last little thing we're going to do is these little transparent kind of cast shadows. So everything, my fake sun is kind of coming from that direction. So, you know, the bum, his back, his head, they're all kind of being lit from this direction. So when we do our cast shadows, I'm just going to use the pen tool. I am on my color later notice. You guys can be as picky and choosy with this as you want. I want a little cast shadow for the tail. I'm just doing solid shapes. Okay, so I'm just doing a blue color. Notice I have my transparency window up, and I'm just going to drop that down to 50. And they'll give me some real subtle little colors. I'm going to do one more right back here. Okay, so I've got my little shape here. Done with the pen tool. Okay, so I just did on a couple. You might even add some more kind of hanging out on this side, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to lock out this layer. Let's just do the kind of the background layer, and then we can kind of call it a day. So I have my background layer here. First thing I'm going to start with is I'm just going to do a rectangle tool. This time you can hide your template layer. Now let's say if we want a nice wonderful little gradient. Say I want this one to be blue. I don't need that one to be opaque. Looks good. Let's just create our nice little sh frame here. Little method behind the madness. So I'm just doing a rounded rectangle. I'm going to have this one a white fill. I'm going to come back over. I just want a nice black rectangle. Okay, black arrow. Arrange, send backwards. I'm just looking at this inside frame here. I think actually I want this white one. 
right around there. Okay, looks good. So I'm holding down shift. When I click the black, as well as the white, come over to your pathfinder. I'm going to minus the front, and that's going to pop back through my gradient. Okay, let's do the little sunburst. Click, click, click. And notice I'm coming outside of the art bird for this one. This is all going to get hidden up. I'm going to hide that little shape. You can kind of pick which color you want. You can also change opacity on it. Just to have a little bit different. And what I'm going to do is right click, arrange, and I want this behind that frame. Okay. I think we are good, guys. So at this point, I say we have our line quality. We have our gradients. We have some funky backgrounds. So let's save this up. So just save the original, just in case we want to edit. Save. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to save a JPEG for this one. You can also do a ping. So it just really depends. For image size, this is what you want to make sure that you have clip to artboard selected. So that's going to get rid of any of that extra that's kind of floating out there. If that is not, just double check that you hit apply. You may hit save. I'm saving a ping. And I want to save a JPEG as well. And save. There we go. So at that point, turn it into Schoology, and you guys are good to go.